Um, I haven't heard from Ken. It's five past. I don't want to delay this any further. So I will get started now. <clears throat> Welcome to the uh, April 6th, 2020 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, we are being recorded by ACMI. Thanks to them for uh, assisting and coping with things. Uh, as a preliminary matter, this is Andrew Bonnell, the chair of the ARD. <clears throat> and I just want to confirm that everyone on the line can hear me okay. You're on the Zoom call, can hear me okay. So raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you have your camera on. Uh, if you can't hear me, raise your hand uh, electronically. Otherwise, I'll assume you can hear me and we'll keep moving on here. So, uh, as I said, we're missing Kin Lao this evening, but. Uh, I see Rachel Zimberry, Eugene Benson, and David Watson. If you could all confirm that you're on, on the call here. Appreciate it. Yes, I'm here. All right, and we have Jenny Rate and Aaron Zwerko from the staff. All right. Yeah, all are here. All right, good. So we have no speakers on the agenda this evening. This is a pretty straightforward, simple meeting. Um, <clears throat> this is an open meeting of the ALP. Consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of uh, March 12th, 20 state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This order, which you can find posted with the agenda, meetings, <clears throat> agenda materials for this meeting and various other sources, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment during what are considered the open hearing, public hearing, <clears throat> uh, agenda items, we will have an open forum at the end of the meeting, consistent with our usual agenda structure. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, as I noted at the beginning. Uh, all attendees are participating by video conference. Uh, people will be able to see you. Please don't screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast will be captured by the recording and sent out there. Uh, all of the materials for this meeting are available on the Novus Agenda dashboard. We recommend that everyone following along, follow along using Novus Agenda and uh, bear with us as we move through this. So we'll turn to the first item on the agenda, uh, just cover some ground rules for effective and clear communication and conduct of our business and so that we can keep meeting minutes accurately and that the recording can be clear. Uh, I'll introduce each item on the agenda uh, we'll walk through. If any members have comments, we'll go to them. Uh, for any votes, we'll be doing those by roll call. So anyone who's on the line, uh, any members, I'll just call their name and ask for an affirmative or a negative or an abstention. Uh, for those of you who wish to speak later on in the meeting, we'll use the raise hand function via Zoom <clears throat> and allow you to do so individually at that time. So moving on to the first agenda item, uh, which involves the meeting schedule moving forward. Uh, we've determined, Jenny and I have determined that it's in the town's best interest to continue to try to conduct business as best we can and not shut down the ARB so long as regular business is progressing. So we need to set a schedule for the next uh, several weeks and months uh, to ensure that everyone is able to continue to do their job. So Jenny, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you so much, Andrew. Um, for everybody's benefit, the next meeting that is technically on the schedule is April 27th. And all meetings from April 27th on were technically devoted to town meeting. So your, uh, your meeting time was actually reduced to about you know 15 minutes of opening a meeting and then adjourning to town meeting. So. Um, we typically would meet at you know 7:45, maybe 7:30 if we wanted to do some sort of business, but we didn't. We didn't necessarily have a proper uh, or planned meeting. But in the absence of town meeting starting at that time, uh, town meeting is now likely to begin later in June. Um, we have many 
open possible dates for those uh, upcoming board meetings. So I um, entertain any suggestions about when you would like to meet next. My suggestion would be first um, that you look at April 27th and maybe think about the, uh, the Monday before that, and then any Mondays after. And th th this evening we're, we're talking obviously at 6 p.m. instead of our regularly scheduled 7.30 p.m. Uh, but we should also clarify the time that you wish to meet. Especially given that schedules are very different and somewhat constrained by various circumstances mm -hmm. given the current situation. So I'll, um, I'll unmute. Uh, the board, if they would like to talk. Go ahead, Jean. I mean, I'd be happy to meet on Monday the 13th and Monday the 27th. And 7.30 works for me, starting it a little earlier, 7 o'clock would actually work for me also on both those dates. The other Monday, the 20th, is Patriots Day. I don't know if that's still considered a holiday or not. You, Jenny's shaking not, her head. Not this year, it's been moved, Patriots Day. So it will not be recognized this year at that, on that day this year. <laughs> ah, so I could meet that Monday evening too. So any of the next three uh, Monday evenings, seven or 7.30 would work for me. Yeah, I'm in the same position. I think it makes sense to meet at either seven or 7.30 to keep things as, routine as possible, um, not only for, for those of us who are uh, involved in the meeting, but for uh, <clears throat> town participants who are used to it being at 7 or 7.30. David or Rachel, any suggestions, ideas? I'm available on any of those upcoming Mondays. Um, 7.30 continues to work for me, but I'm open to uh, doing it earlier if um, circumstances uh, make that easier for people. Um, 7 p.m. Would be, would be great for me just a little bit earlier. Um, and uh, I'm also open the next, the next three Mondays since I'm not traveling anymore. Yeah. Right. So, um, Jenny, does it make sense to schedule those Mondays? How many do we need? And I think starting at seven probably works for everyone. Okay. I'm glad to schedule all three of those Mondays. I think um, we could just jump to the 20th and then also the 27th. Okay. I'm not sure much will change between now and next Monday night. But, yeah. um, if we don't need to schedule next month, if we don't need to schedule the 13th, let's keep that off now. And we can okay. we can do the twentieth and the twenty seventh unless there's any business for then. Yes. Okay. Twentieth and twenty seventh. Twentieth and seven, seven p.m. Okay. Any other dates in the future we need to think about? Um, well, you should just think about your May dates because the May dates were all you know geared towards. So <laughs> you technically had scheduled May fourth and May eighteenth were your meetings. Um, you know your regular ARB meeting outside of town meetings. So if you want to just keep those evenings, we can keep that as is. Um, it would mean three consecutive Monday nights though. Go ahead, Jean. Sorry, hold on. I'm okay with keeping those two May dates as it is, maybe moving them to 7 p.m. and then always regroup and find another date to add. That would be my thought for now. Yeah, I'm fine to do it that way. All right. Rachel, okay. Yeah, so, I'm okay with that. I agree. I, yeah. All right, so we need to vote to reorganize the schedule as discussed. So if someone would like to make a motion to uh, <clears throat> schedule those meeting dates, April 20th, April 27th, uh, and then May, 4th, 11th, and 18th. So moved. I thought
thought it was just the 4th and the 18th. Is it the 4th, 11th, and the 18th of May? You added the 11th, that. OK. That was the motion. Oh, so, sorry, maybe, uh, were we not discussing the 11th and the Sorry, I thought we were at it. All right, so we'll keep, we'll add the 20th and the 27th. Let me, let me, sorry, we're all getting used to this. So <clears throat> I'll take a motion to, there is a motion on the table, David. We withdraw that motion. I'll, I'll withdraw that motion. Right. So we'll need a motion to reorganize, reschedule the ARB meetings to uh, April 20th, April 27th, May 4th and May 18th. So moved at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. So moved. So we need a second. Rachel seconds. All right. All right. So. Seconded. Okay. So, Mr. Benson, are you in favor or opposed? Uh, yes, in favor. Okay. Mr. Watson? Yes, in favor. Okay. Ms. Zimberry? Yes, in favor. All right, and I vote in favor, so it's four zero. I'm moving on. Okay, so now we need to continue the public hearings that have sort of been <clears throat> sitting in the hopper um, as we figure things out and figure out other people's schedules. So I'll bring Jenny back on for this. Uh, the first one is in Mass Ave. Thanks so much, Andrew. Um, so for this agenda item, you have four public hearings. Three of them are continued public hearings from prior meetings, um, and one of them had their first public hearing tonight. Uh, all of the materials are posted to the Novus, Novus Agenda related to um, 434 Mass Ave and 880 Mass Ave, which is the new public hearing. The 833 Mass Ave had been continued previously, and then 1207 to 1211 Mass Ave had also requested a longer term uh, continuance. Um, initially, it was to uh, May 11th. So, um, so for any of these, you can continue them to the, any of those future dates that you've now scheduled, and we can then communicate that back to the applicants. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the I think actually you want to take them one by one and vote, um, and then uh, the one that's last that's listed here has its first public hearing tonight. So you'd be just immediately continuing that. Okay. So first up is 1207-1211 Mass Ave. They had communicated to the department that they were available May 11th. Uh, I think we can continue that to May 18th. Okay, and David has his hand raised. Okay, go ahead, David. Oh, I, I just wanted to ask whether Jenny had a recommendation on which dates we should continue which hearings to. That's a good question. Um, I think that the best thing to do is to uh, take the 1207 and you suggested May 18th. I think that for the other three, you could probably April 20th or April 27th. Um, either one of those dates would work, I believe, for the, those applicants if we needed them to. They're all 434 Mass Ave and 880 Mass Ave uh, with the exception of the, the staff report, um, those are ready to go for your review. 833 Mass Ave, as you know, is the Atwood House, and they do have it with the board, so they would be prepared for that. So I, I would recommend those three could be moved to the 20th or 27th, or just the 20th, and then the other one I mentioned for the 18th. Okay. Um, we can do it that way. I don't think it's in a, uh, <clears throat> since we're just rescheduling, I think that's fine. So I think I'd take a motion to move 1207-1211 uh, Mass Ave to May 18th. All right, so David moves the motion. I need a second. A second. Okay, so very second. I'd like, I'd like a little discussion about this. I'm not opposed to moving it, but I would like them between, I'm not sure we can require this, but if we can, I'd like 
them before they arrive on May 18th to have gone to the Historic Commission to present what they're proposing to do to the Historic Commission and um, start the process for the demolition bylaw so that they can give us an update on that. On May 11th, I'm just afraid that if that's happening later, everything is getting pushed back. So I'd like that to, um, I don't know if that's part of this motion, an amendment to this motion or a separate motion. So this is, right now we're talking about 1207, 1211 Mass Ave, which is the Heights Hotel. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking the Atwood House, my apologies. Yeah, I thought so. So we can, we can get to that. This okay. is, so this so, is the, Okay. So, if I withdraw what I said, I'll save right. it for later. So we have a motion and a second. Um, I'll go basic based on my screen, Rachel. Uh, in favor, yes. Okay, David. Yes. Jean. Yes. And I am in favor. So that hearing is moved to May 18th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Okay, so uh, fourth. <laughs> For Mass Ave. This is the uh, Taipei Tokyo and their signage application. They are uh, ready to go. <clears throat> um, I think under these circumstances, under normal circumstances, they would have been ready to, to go tonight. Um, but given how we chose to run this meeting and introduce things this evening, it makes sense to have them come back uh, another day so that they're prepared to present but I think we could have them back on uh, April 20th for review and a, a, a vote. So moved. Second. All right, Rachel. Uh, uh, yes, in favor. Okay. David. Yes. Jean. Yes. All right, I vote yes. So 434 Mass Ave is continued to April 20th. Uh, 833 Mass Ave is the Atwood House. So Jean, you can now make your point as far as a historical commission and Jenny, you can weigh in as to whether we can push them to do that. Uh, I do think that's probably a good idea if we have that authority, keep that ball <clears throat> moving, especially given the fact that things are uh, slow lately, have slowed down necessarily. Um, I'm okay with that. I think continuing that to April 27th makes sense. I'll ask Jenny, do you think they can get to the Historic Commission? No, I do not. No, at the moment I am going to be working with the Historical Commission to, to determine when they can meet and probably assisting them to meet virtually, which they are currently not really set up to do just yet. So um, they canceled their meeting that was supposed to happen, I believe it was last week, or maybe it was going to happen this week, um, this week, to tomorrow night. Um, and uh, until I know when they're going to meet again, I can't promise that I can, um, you know, or that this applicant would be able to go to them before the 27th. I, I doubt that would be, it seems unlikely. It, it's not necessarily impossible, but it seems unlikely. I mean, perhaps some consultation with the chair of the Historical Commission would be appropriate. I might recommend that and then uh, see where we go from there. Uh, whether or not the commission will meet and when um, is another, requires uh, further follow-up. Would, would they file whatever application they need to file to start the demolition bylaw, and could they do that by the 27th? I mean, they could, conceivably. I think they want to have the redevelopment. My sense was that they wanted the redevelopment board to weigh in a little bit more before they would go to the Historical Commission. And I think that perhaps giving them another opportunity um, to get your opinions on their proposal before they go to the Historical Commission still makes some sense. Um, and then also maybe even to provide the Historical Commission with, uh, with a letter regarding where, you know, it's not a vote necessarily of the, the decision, but some, uh, you know, sense of where the board stands in the review process and our expectations for the applicant moving forward. I think that would be appropriate. But again, I don't believe that the commission will meet before that meeting that you suggested uh, continuing this to. And so my suggestion would be that I consult with the chair of the historical commission regarding the 
uh, request that you've made and their sort of review of where it stands right now, coming back to the board on the 27th perhaps, and then finding a later date for them to present to the entire commission. So that's the case and, and keeping in mind Jean's request. Um, I think having them come back on the 20th might be better. <clears throat> If, if all we're doing is getting a status update from them and telling them to get get their ducks in a row with the other boards in town, the commissions in town that need to review their application. I'd agree with that too. All right. So I, I so move. Second. Okay. Rachel? Yes. David? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I vote yes, so. Just, just to clarify, um, we're continuing it to the 20th. Between now and the time that we post that meeting, I will send any plans to Joanne Robinson, the chair, and ask her if she could weigh in and also get some guidance on when they might be meeting next. And then I'll be able to share that information with the board when you meet on the 20th. Okay, good. Does that sound like a plan? Yes. Yeah, I think not only have Joanne weigh in, on, but um, on the process they would need to go to initiate the demolition bylaw process. Okay, sure. Okay, good. All right, and then 880 Mass Ave was a new sign application by TD Bank <clears throat> for signs that they were more or less ready to go this evening as well. Uh, we could hold that hearing on either April 20th or April 27th, depending on how people felt about uh, the schedule thus far. So what we got on the 20th already? Uh, 434 Mass Ave, which is the Taipei Tokyo hearing, 833 Mass Ave, which is the Atwood House. Um, my thinking is, um, we could probably do this on the 20th without a lot of heavy, heavy lifting. Um, the Atwood House hearing is likely to take up a lot more time and would require, um, all of these would obviously require public comment, but I would expect there to actually be public comment during the Atwood House. So significant portion of the, the meeting, <clears throat> just in the interest of time and uh, using everybody's wisely, it might make more sense to do that on the 27th. We can have a conversation about that right now. I'm just wondering whether we think there'll be any other item that might be on the agenda for the 27th, because if there's not, and we included them on the 20th, then we wouldn't have to meet at all right. on the 27th. Why don't we do that on the 20th, then, and the 11th? If it's not necessary, can always take it off the schedule. Okay. So I would move that we um, continue um, 880 MESEV to April 20th. Yes. David? Yes. Jean. So. So 880 Mass Ave is continued then. So the department will have a conversation and we'll see all those folks on those dates. Good, good job. All right, uh, moving on to director's updates. So Jenny, this is your turn. Um, one second. Sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Um, Again. So um, what I wanted to share with you is really just uh, where we stand in terms of, you know, the operations and, and what's going on um, with the department. And so I'm, I really just planned to read something to you briefly right now, which is um, to outline sort of where we're at and what the expectations are to the public um, with regard to just office operations as well as uh, board operations. Um, I think I've communicated bits and pieces to you uh, through email 
uh, obviously over the past few weeks, but I wanted to state things publicly for everybody's awareness. So um, I'm going to read now. So in response to the COVID-19 related state of emergency, the Department of Planning and Community Development has transitioned to remote operations completely. We will be checking our voicemail and our email messages regularly. We're also responding as soon as we possibly can. That's practicable. practicable. Due to the volume of calls and email that we have been receiving in the past and we may expect to receive again, we ask that everybody bear with us as we work through this really unprecedented um, event. In accordance with uh, the House Bill 4598, which is Chapter 53 of the Acts of 2020, it's called an act to address challenges faced by municipalities and state authorities resulting from COVID-19, which was signed into law on April 3rd, 2020, specifically section 17, which applies to permitting, reviews, and meetings. The department is transitioning to accepting all electronic therefore can be mailed by PDF in some sort of PDF format or other format and attached to an email with a copy of the application fee. The original application and a check will be mailed to the office and a receipt will be provided by mail to all applicants. All applications will be emailed to the clerk's office and posted on the town's website. A butter's notices will continue to be mailed and decisions will also be mailed. Application reviews will also continue to take place, including permits that are already in progress and under review, under review by the department and the board. The business of the board will also continue within the order issued by the governor regarding permitting application reviews and public meetings and hearings, as you now have discussed, the meetings and the hearings that you will be holding um, in the future, the immediate future. So until further notice, all board business will be conducted electronically. Zoom software, as I think most people know, is what we are using for these meetings. The meeting is recorded by Zoom, and it is also being rerun by ACMI, who's recording this meeting right now. The, board meet, the board's meetings, as everybody knows, are not live meetings. They are recorded and they're run at a later date following the board's regular meetings. Meeting rules will be outlined by the chair at the start of each meeting, and also rules will be added to when we have public forums or public open forum at the end of our meetings. I also wanted to let you know that long range planning activities will continue and the public engagement processes that we had planned and really envisioned and hoped for, for the spring and the summer and the fall are being reimagined so that we can continue those activities to gain input and to have dialogue about plans and progress. Any upcoming virtual meeting opportunities will be posted on the town's website and shared via multiple media channels. We appreciate your patience at this time and we thank you for your continued interest in our operations and for your cooperation. So that was what I wanted to let everybody know. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Anything else? No, that was all. I'm, I'm open to any questions. Go ahead, Jean. Just a procedural question. So we've got the hearings on the 20th. Two of them are for permits. Let's say we actually vote in favor of one of those permits. How does the permit get circulated for our signatures? So instead of you coming to the office to sign it, I will have to do sort of a mail chain with all of you. Um, and it'll it all involves mailing it to one of you and then you probably dropping it off either at somebody's house in their mailbox perhaps, or, and we can do that in, a, there's, there's various ways which we can transfer these documents safely. Um, there's also an option, we will have a staff person coming to the office on Tuesdays and Thursdays who will be there from 10 to 11 to deal with mail and all of our billing and our accounting and um, you know, regular responsibilities that can only be handled directly in the office. But there could be an option where the documents are left outside of town hall for you to pick up and sign, and then that individual would, would pick them up. I'm wondering um, if but my, my preference would be by mail and then circulated across the five of you. And then when it comes back to us, we will record it, you know, in accordance with all the, the regulations and or um, keep it in uh, the clerk's office as part of a, a posted item on their website uh, so that it's the full 20 day appeal period can be achieved before it's um, final. I'm wondering if there's a possibility of electronic signatures during this time. There is a possibility of that. Um, and I can explore what that might look like. So yes, that is that is allowed under the order. And I can investigate that if that makes everybody feel the most comfortable. That would 
that would definitely be the most comfortable for me by far. Yeah, the SJC just announced uh, that it's losing it, loosening its own requirements. Uh, I got an email just as we were getting on this call. David and Jean, you probably got it too. Um, yeah. As long as you have an active bar registration. So we'll see what that has to say and how we can incorporate that um, to special permits. So good. Any other questions for the director regarding her updates? Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. All right. Thank I see you. we have three guests on the line. Jean um, <clears throat> is like a radio host. Uh, if any of you would wish to speak, uh, we'll move into the open forum portion of the hearing or the meeting this evening. Uh, there's a little button on your Zoom screen to uh, raise your hand. So if you would like to speak during the open forum portion, please do that. Uh, and then we'll have Jenny, who is the host of the meeting, unmute you so that you can leave a comment. Uh, I'll give you 30 seconds or so to do that if you can't find it. Um, there must be some way to. There's also only three of them. Yeah. So go ahead. Uh, Don, go ahead. Uh, am I okay? Am I muted? You're on now. You're on now. I unmuted you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick questions for Jenny. Uh, I think you mentioned that the there were new materials received for the Atwood House application. Uh, is that going to be, or is it already posted somewhere online for the public to see? I think it was posted with our last meeting, um, which didn't take place on March 16th. And we can re, we'll make sure that it's posted with the other Atwood materials, Atwood House rather materials. Okay, thank you. And uh, on the 1207-1211 Mass Ave project, uh, are there any new materials that have been submitted since, uh, I guess it's been since January on that? No, I do not believe so. Thank you. Anything else? Not from me. Okay, I'm going to mute you then. Thanks, Don. Ann or Winnell, do you wish to speak? This is Ann Leroyer. I, I was just curious about the hotels project. And so I see that you're just postponing it until May. So we'll wait to see any new materials that arrive about that. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right. Go ahead, Winnell. Um, I'm just lurking. I just want to say thanks to all of you for, for continuing to work during these extraordinary times and I hope you're all doing well. Thank you. All right, David, you have your hand up. Yeah, I uh, had a question for Don since uh, he's, he's on the line, which is um, he uh, did submit some additional correspondence with shadow studies for 1207, 1211 Mass Ave. And I was wondering how did he produce those? Um, actually, uh, do I have the capability of sharing a screen? I haven't done it before in Zoom. No. I can. Okay. Um, it's actually, well, it, it goes back to last year when I heard a number of members of the board on several occasions saying that they were kind of dissatisfied for what's written in the bylaws regarding shadows and they it isn't enough to know simply which houses might be affected, but you are more interested in knowing how significant the impact would be. And uh, I started looking into it and I found it's really pretty simple to find out for any particular house, how many hours during the day and when they occur that'll be in shadow. Uh, it's something I was able to do by hand and I'm sure there are software tools that will do it even more easily. Um, so it's, in the case of the hotel, for instance, I, I sent you a memo regarding it, and there were two structures. Uh, one's a three-family, and the other, I think, is a two-family on Pierce Street, and they're the only ones that are significantly impacted. Um, and it's very easy just knowing the uh, measuring on a map the distance and the angle between the proposed building and these houses. I can determine very quickly. Um, 
when the houses first go into shadow and when they come out of it on any particular day. Um, and I, I use the, basically the information from the US Naval Observatory, which is sort of the US's version of Greenwich England Observatory uh, for sun azimuth and altitude. Um, and I think I showed in what I had sent you that um, one of the houses, uh, the one on 22 Pier Street, um, I picked February 2nd as a date because that's the midpoint of winter, halfway between the solstice and the spring equinox. And it's in sunshine from sunrise at 7 a.m. and then goes into shadow about three hours later. And it never goes back into sunshine for the rest of the day. Uh, the other house that's affected, um, which includes 26, 28, 30 Pierce, uh, it has only two hours of sunlight in the morning, and then it picks up about an hour and a half in the afternoon. Now, uh, although it was done for February 2nd, this is pretty much the same time as throughout much of winter. Um, in fact, it, this condition lasts from about mid-October to just about March 1st. Um, so that is the impact on those houses. And um, I can run other scenarios, look at other houses, but for the particular project here, those are the only two structures which are significantly impacted. Does that sort of answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I'd be glad to correspond with you um, offline if you if you have any more detailed questions or other things you want me to look at on that. Sure, I appreciate that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Jenny, anything else? No, thank All right. you. Well, thanks everyone for joining us and <clears throat> I think uh, the first shot, this went all right, and we'll continue to work at it. This is the new normal uh, for as long as anybody can tell. So I appreciate everybody's work and stay sane, stay healthy, uh, get outside, but stay away from anybody else near you. And I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Gene. Second. Second. All right. Uh, Rachel. Uh, yes. David? Yes. Green? Yes. And I vote yes. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Be safe. Thank you. Likewise. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Bye now, everybody.